So today we're going to talk about Dankery Franklin shooting. Um, this was suggested to me by somebody on the YouTube uh, page, which is great. Um, I found it pretty fascinating. This is pretty contemporary. Um, so this happened in March of 2019. And the footage that we're about to watch, um, a portion of it was released in March, or sorry, in April of 2019. And we're going to watch... We're going to use the full video. We're probably not going to watch the whole thing because a lot of it is after the fact. Um, but we're going to get the additional context. All right, so let's see. I think there's not much audio. So um, if I, just to kind of preface it, we're going to go through an article here afterward. But just to preface it, um, Officers reporting to a call at a Burger King. The report says that there is a man who maybe became, went behind the counter, may have a gun, maybe it was waving a gun. Um, one person reports there's a gun, one person says they're not sure. So that's what this officer knows kind of showing up to it. Honda. Up here, what you said was parked. Right the very front door. Uh, right in the handicap spot. There. As you come in, the PVA is going to be right there on your left. Maroon Honda Accord. He should still be in the passenger side of the vehicle. Here, 23. <laughs> so we've got two officers showing up at basically the same moment. These are the first officers on the scene, as far as I understand. Yeah, if you've got somebody else, I'll, I'll maybe forward. That is loud. Um, yeah, there's some distortion in this video because she's screaming. So apparently he's on the other side of this. The first thing they do is they apparently charge him with guns drawn. Because, I don't know. They So apparently, he, you know, there's a weapon reported. So apparently that gives them, that puts them on this point where they're going to start with a gun. I'm crossing. I'm crossing. Get out of the way. Sir, put the gun down. Put it down. Put it down now. Put the gun down. Put He's got a gun. Around. He's got a gun. What I think is interesting here is this Burger King employee who walks right up to him. So these cops are in a very, obviously, a very tuned up life or death situation. But nobody else is. He's kind of leaning down to, to their credit. I don't know what he's doing. It is confusing. But this person isn't really afraid. And then there's a passenger in the seat here. I thought that that was an interesting detail. Drop the gun! Drop the weapon! Ma'am, get out of the way! Ma'am, get, get out of the way! Drop the gun! Drop the gun! Drop it! Drop it now! Drop, it. drop the weapon! Drop it! I said drop it! I said drop it! Drop it! Drop the weapon now! Put it on the ground! Put it on the ground! Put the gun on the ground! Put it Put on the ground! Get out! Put it on the ground! Put it on the ground! Drop it! Shots fired! Shots fired! I shot a fire. We got one shot. I'm gonna need medic now. What? Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Oh, you're on the I'm on the dash. I'm the GM. I'm the GM. I just, I just pulled it on the dash. I gotta pick up the gun. The, uh, what? Stay the fuck off the radio! Okay, I need the radio, please. Stay over there! We need, we need your units out here now. Oh, I can't even get on the radio. I know. I want to, we're going to keep going through this. We're going to go back and review it again here in a minute. Here, let me use the radio. This is crazy, uh, man. Just stay there. Stay there. We're going to. Y'all killed my friend. I don't know if you heard that part. Just stay there. Stay there. Nah, I could be wrong about that. We're going to. Let me talk to so 
There's a report of a weapon. There isn't a weapon anywhere obvious in this. I don't know if you heard him. Some point, someone says, we heard you the first time. So he's looking. That could be that could be a look of a lot of things. To me, that's a look of holy fucking shit this escalated quickly and why do I I have cops drawn on me? That's what it says to me. It could also be a look of um, just general confusion from somebody being in maybe some sort of mental distress or maybe unaware of what's happening in their surroundings. But the way I read his facial expressions is holy shit. I can't believe we're here. Drop it. We heard you the first time. I don't know who says that. I'm not sure who. I don't see anybody else around them. Maybe there's a bot. Maybe there's a bystander. I, it doesn't sound like the guy in the car. So this might actually be Frank saying this. I heard you the first time. Drop it! Drop it! I said drop, I said drop, drop it! it. Drop it! Drop the weapon! I think he says it. I think he says it right there. So, again, if that's him saying it, seems like he isn't necessarily in mental distress. It seems like he's just very surprised at where we're at. No! Put it on the ground! Put it on the ground! Put the gun on the ground! So, his weapon is in his pocket. It's not actually in his hand anywhere. He's got a gun. To provide some background, North Carolina is an open carry state, meaning that you don't need to have any type of specific permit in order to carry the, the firearm openly. Now, if it's in his pocket, that's technically concealed, probably, more than likely, um, which again, you would need a permit for. But um, North Carolina also has some laws around um, how weapons need to be licensed. Like to get a handgun, it's actually kind of complicated. You have to, um, you have to have a permit or a concealed carry to get a handgun in North Carolina. Um, but some interesting context. Good. Because the reason it's interesting is because had he had a weapon displayed openly, <clears throat> I mean, they would, they would be effectively treating somebody who is doing something completely lawful um, as a very dangerous criminal. And I think that that adds complexity to these types of situations where a cop's just gonna roll up with their gun pre-drawn on somebody who might have a weapon when, I mean, theoretically, it's, it's very lawful for them to have a weapon open and displayed. I don't think cops would feel that way regardless. So he pulls the weapon out. We obviously see him pull the weapon out. And that's when there was a fire. That's when there's a shot. So this is where we get into um, if you're not familiar with the Daniel Shaver piece, Daniel Shaver was the man who was drunk in a um, apartment complex, I believe it was in Vegas or something to that effect, um, when some people reported a gun being there. Apparently he was part of a pest control unit and he had the gun, it was part of his job. Um, he's drunk, he's got hands standing up, they're giving him commands, they're telling him what to do. He clearly doesn't have a weapon on him. He kind of starts to crawl and then something happens and then they shoot him. Um, there's a big narrative around uh, that people will point to in these types of situations. We're gonna read one here in a minute when we uh, read the different articles where people will say, hey, why didn't you comply with that command? If you just did what the officer said, you would have been fine. How, how do you, I'm not sure how you possibly comply with this order in this type of situation because this is kind of this is this is what we see kind of time and time time again if you comply with an order you're just as you're just as likely to be shot and killed the reason when i had the cop with the gun drawn on me i put my hands up even though he told me give me your id give me your id now give me your id what did i do with the gun on me nothing fuck you. I am not going to do that. I'm not going to put my weapon anywhere near it. I'm not going to obey a police command that says put your put your hand where I think a weapon might be where it's possible for that to be construed. And what did he do in response? He violated my Fourth Amendment rights. So 
again, we get into the complexities of this type of situation. But that's what we have here, is we have him complying with the order. He doesn't do it immediately. Again, it seems very obvious he is frustrated and surprised that this is the reaction he's getting from these cops. We don't know that we don't know the circumstances around the situation. All we know is what's been reported. But drop it! Drop, drop the weapon the ground. now! Put it on the ground! Put it on the ground! Put the gun on the ground! Put it, Put it on the ground! He's doing it slowly. He's not one thing I would say that in his case I would probably do is I would probably say, my gun is here, this is what I'm doing. Not that it would fucking change anything, because again, these cops are so fucking spooled up and scared that they're ready to... He's not, he's not looking towards her to acquire a target, looking her in the eyes, figuring out how he's going to draw the gun. He's, he's literally looking forward, and he goes for it. And it's just, it's a problem with how we have trained cops, with how we are coming at these types of situations that they're coming to say drop this weapon that he doesn't have in his hand yet that they haven't they don't understand shots fired shots fired i shot a fire what let me see your hands. So I think what he is saying is that he is the GM, as in the general manager of the store. Is he holding that guy up? Is he threatening him? I don't know. Doesn't look like it to me. It's possible. It's possible he had threatened the guy and that, you know, he's robbing the place. Like this is this is the narrative that the probably the least charitable narrative of what he's doing is that he was doing some sort of robbery or using the weapon in some sort of nefarious way. I think it's equally as possible. It seems more likely that these people know each other. That's what that's what it says to me. Um, again, the context of if he said this is my friend, I could be totally wrong. I shouldn't even make that assessment. But this doesn't look like two, one person threatening another. Why would he have the gun in his pocket? Wouldn't he have it on him? The, just the context doesn't really make sense. I think that when the facts of this case come out, because um, they were supposed to do a 90-day review on this. The officer was suspended. Uh, we're, we're actually past the 90 days, and we're not there yet. Um, but I think when the facts of this case come out, we're going to find out that, they're, that they knew each other, they had been friends, um, that this was not necessarily any type of nefarious situation. I got to pick up the gun. The, uh, Stay the fuck off the radio! Okay, I need the radio. Stay over there! We need, we need more units out here now. Not sure why they need more units, but it's just one guy on the ground that they've already killed. So I don't really understand why they need more units, but... Oh, I can't even get on the radio. I know. A complaint that comes up is that these people are not providing him any type of medical treatment at this point. His life potentially could have been saved had they started medical treatment. They, they got the gun from him. They could have frisked him. He's on the ground. They could have provided some sort of first aid and assistance. Again, in many locations, police officers are trained to do this because often they are also the first responders towards homeless or people in other types of distress. Um, emergency situations, you know, maybe they get there before a paramedic does. Here, let me use the radio. This is crazy, uh, man. This is crazy, man. The guy in the passenger says, this is crazy. He doesn't seem to think that this was an appropriate response. Just stay there. Stay there. We're going to... God, it really sounds like it to me. We're going to need multiple units multiple units. We've got people inside the store and outside the parking lot. Somebody's crying. Do not turn off. Are you on? Okay, sorry. I've been on the whole time. This is the only video that we have of this. Of This, this is the only body cam. For whatever reason, the other officer didn't turn it on. This is a major problem with the body camera technology as we have it today. It is pretty much all officer activated on and off. So 
I mean, I, I'm empathetic to memory. Like, I could imagine forgetting to put one on here and there. Um, but that's a problematic aspect because, you know, the more types of manual processes of turning it on and on we add to the situation, the more you're just not going to get that type of context. He had a different angle. She was very much like 90 degrees from him. So it was pretty hard for her to see what was going on. He had a better angle and he didn't shoot. But we don't know. So they're reporting the other people around it. He pulled the gun. Yes, he did. I know, Wendy. <laughs> he pulled the gun. Okay. I'm all right. Yep, I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> Sir, we need you to stay over there, please. Ma'am, we need you to, I know, but just stay over there for right now, please. I need units in this parking lot ASAP. I'm the GM. I just pulled up. That's my wife. Keep everybody from coming out of there, Andrew. <laughs> Grab him. He's a witness. Multiple witnesses and vehicles in the parking lot. I think Marianne's going to grab the one that was on the corner. That's his girlfriend in there. I think we're gonna find out that this that he wasn't doing anything nefarious in this situation. I think we're gonna find out that he was just there hanging out, somebody saw a gun, and fucking panicked. Without any context. I had to take this, uh, it was underneath him. Again, everybody is treating him like he's dead. More officers are showing up. Nobody's saying anything about his safety. Nobody's attempting any type of assistance at all. We don't, all I know is I shot because he had the gun in his hand. This is the gun. I had to take it from underneath him. Just leave right there. We'll leave right there. There's crime scene tape in the back of mine here. Let me open it. Go ahead. <laughs> I haven't touched him yet. I shot him, so I didn't. I didn't, I had to get the gun from underneath him first. I wanted to see him with a gun. Finally, the EMTs are here to do something. also a problem with traumatic situations unfortunately i i am someone i am somewhat empathetic to somebody's memory being faulty even in these moments this was high stress the more stress the more anxiety we feel the less our memory the less we're, our perception of things equals factual a very huge <laughs> this this is the problem with the you know the warrior cop fucking training that we do for these people where we key them up, where we spool them up 
and tell them to be afraid, tell them that they might not come home any day, is that their, their stress level is just so amplified in these situations that they're not thinking clearly in the moment. They're not perceiving the situation as it factually is. We want our officers to be calm. We want them to be cool. We want them to be collected. And we're going to talk a little bit later how we can do that. It's right here. That's not mine. God, I hope we get to hear her talk more. I didn't have a choice. You're all right. You're all right. You okay? I'm okay. I'm all right. I So, of course, she thinks that what she did is acceptable, is tolerable. Head on the dash, of course. I mean, this is... That's un understandable. He wouldn't drop the gun and he right. brought it out of his jacket. Hey, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Look at here. You're sitting here talking. Right? Got kids at home, right? You must see them singing, right? Yeah. That's what matters. There it is. There, there it fucking is, right there. That's the mentality. Reinstated. Right there. Hey. You're here still talking, right? You got kids, right? You got a family, right? What matters is you came home. What matters is you survived. That's what matters. That's what matters. We see it reiterated over and over and over every single time. That is why, although I don't think this woman should be on the force anymore, I don't blame her in entirety. It is the system, it is their training, it is their process that creates this every single time. We are spooling them up for this. This is, the human, bo the human being can only do so much when you have this jammed in your head at every single moment that you're a fucking hero, that your life is in the line, that every speeding ticket is gonna be somebody, there's a 99%, you have to treat it like there's a 99% chance that somebody's gonna come at you with a fucking ma machine gun right at your fucking face for a $15 ticket or whatever. Like, this is, this is what we do. This is the eventuality. This is the inevitability of that type of training right here. Yeah, yeah, there's a ton of it. Hey Hawkins, is he alive? Is he alive? Where's overcast? Yeah, I'm gonna need just a beer because I thought I could take some of the He had Walsh, he was taking his four fifths. That was earlier, so they might, he was probably downtown. He was taking two there? Took a Walsh, I think. Oh. Central heading over there now. You're gonna need more than more than that. I can have other divisions start this way. Yeah, I'm also gonna. So I think that's it for this video. I actually hadn't watched the thing, the pieces afterward. <laughs> Very interesting. So let's now read the article here. Let's see what it says about this situation. So this is from a WFAE, Charlotte's NPR. What we know about Dankir Franklin. I have not heard his first name. I think he went by Frank. I saw some stuff that looked like he went by Frank. On April 15th, the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department released body cam video from an officer involved shooting on March 25th. The shooting occurred in the Burger King parking lot in West Charlotte. 
Officer Wendy Curl, a white police officer, encountered 27-year-old Dakir Franklin, a black man. CPMD says Officer Curl perceived a lethal threat when she fatally shot Franklin. Many community members who have viewed this video argue Franklin was in the process of dropping his gun when he was shot. That seems incredibly fucking obvious. In retrospect, the portion of the video's release confirms that Franklin had a gun, but there are still more questions than answers. Here's a breakdown of what we know and what we don't. Uh, so, 911 calls were received at 9 and 9.01 a.m. The first caller said the person entered the Burger King, walked behind the counter with a gun, and pointed at an employee. The second caller said a person approached her vehicle in the parking lot and looked like he was pulling out a gun, but added that she didn't see it. So we have two 911 calls. One that says a person entered. We don't have a lot of detail, unfortunately, about who these people were. Probably bystanders is my guess. If he knew the employees inside, realistically, probably just bystanders. Curl and another officer were dispatched at 9.02 a.m. To, to a call of an assault with a deadly weapon with no injury. A description of the individual is given to both officers over the radio. So this is another problem that comes up a lot in these types of situations. We have a game of phone tag where the context and the nuance of the situation is completely lost to the people that are showing up. So we start with an operator saying, getting receiving a, a, a call from somebody saying, hey, I'm not really sure. I think I saw somebody with a gun. Maybe they pointed it at somebody. That is then simplified and saying, officers, somebody pointing at a, a gun at somebody is assault with a deadly weapon. So they simplify it, assault with a deadly weapon at the Burger King. So they're now, now not are they, sorry, now they're not spooled up for the contextual idea that somebody might have a, a gun and somebody might just, or, or maybe, maybe or maybe not somebody had a gun. They are spooled up to think somebody has assaulted somebody with a gun and that's what they're ready for. A description of the individual is given to both officers of the radio. In addition, CP, CMPD's real-time crime center was monitoring the call directed by the officers over the radio to his exact location. Body cam video shows they arrived at the same time with Deal's vehicle instead of occurs. The Deal is the, the man, Curl is the, the woman who we have the point of view from. They observed Franklin squatting next to an open front passenger door of the vehicle with a man in the passenger seat. We, we saw all of this. The footage shows Franklin with his left hand between his legs. He was told at least 24 times by officers to drop his weapon. As we know, he heard them. He said, yeah, I heard you the first time. Officers constantly repeat it. When dealing with a gun, it seems very reasonable to me that I wouldn't really know. If I had officers screaming at me, if I'm putting myself in his, in his position and I'm sitting in front of talking to someone, and again, let's just assume for charitability's sake that I don't have any malicious intent with my weapon, and I, but I know I have one, and I have officers with their guns drawn on me, I think I'd take a fucking moment to think about what the hell I'm gonna do as well. I might try to communicate with them, but many people in that type of panic moment don't know what to do. We're not all perfect. Clearly the cops are spooled up. It seems reasonable that somebody without any type of training would also potentially be feeling anxiety, fear, things like that. Um, Franklin then moves his right hand and it appears that he is holding a gun with the butt facing the man and the barrel facing himself. Curl says she perceived an imminent deadly threat, fires two shots at Franklin while his hand moves, striking and killing him. As officers continue to demand, he dropped the gun and it appears Franklin says to officers, you told me to, while he slowly slumps to the ground. These appear to be his last words before he died. When Curl moves says Franklin, she picks up the gun. Franklin's transformed where he's pronounced it. Okay. Other context. Um, they released the full minute video, full minute video, which is what we watched. Um, heard her saying that she had no choice because he wouldn't drop his gun that he didn't have in his hand. Again, this isn't a situation where he's actively got a gun and he's holding it. This is a situation where he has a gun somewhere on him in an open carry state. Important context. It doesn't really feel to me in these types of situations like officers are, un are have any understanding of the laws of what concealed and open carry laws are. Never really comes up concerns about Hey, you know, if he has a gun here, maybe he has a concealed carry permit. Maybe these are all legal things. Never really comes up in the conversation, which I find to be very disappointing. Um, another part of the video, they commanded him to drop his gun. Franklin seemed to be holding the gun by the barrel with a butt face. Okay. Um, nobody gives him medical attention. 
This is interesting. So the police chief addressed the lack of medical attention in the news conference before the additional videos released. He said those officers need more training to get first aid. So slightly refreshing is their leadership saying, what I saw as far as the medical attention was unacceptable. What cannot be more disheartening is watching the video. We see a lot of them. It appears that, but for training, we could have rendered more aid. I can tell you the specific video of Mr. Franklin is a good example. That, at least that is good. Bundy said there was no dash cam footage of the incident, um, and her her dash her chest video is the only option. Um, at a news conference the day after the video's release, the chief of police said this. This is one of the most troubling videos I've seen, and the truth of the matter is, I'm happy that there are many levels of accountability. I'm not gonna defend a thing. That's not my job. I'm not gonna defend the officer's actions. I'm not gonna be out there to vilify I'm not out there to vilify Franklin. This is at least a positive statement. Now, we haven't finished the internal investigation, so it's entirely possible that it could be some bullshit like what happened with me, where a sheriff comes out and says, hey, that was fucked up, We're, you know, and, and kind of reassures people, because that's, in reality, this could be totally disingenuous. This could simply be damage control. This could be entirely him trying to calm things down. Because, and then waiting and hoping, you know, three months later that people don't remember, don't understand. Don't follow up with it. Um, of course, people are pissed off. Yep. Um, a lot of people were pissed. We want to see her charged and indicted. She should. So this went to the DA's office. So the DA means that this is a criminal investigation. Um, and an, an internal investigation would just be for process and procedure. This is actually going to be a criminal investigation. Now, they might not take it. When I gave all my evidence to the district attorney's office and they held it for a while, they basically could just came back and said, yep. We, there's not enough to even try them because we don't think we can get a conviction. That will probably happen here. Be prepared for that to be the exact same case here because the, the problem is, is we have the Graham v. Connor standard. If you don't know, the Graham v. Connor standard is the, what would a reasonable officer do in this situation? And the reasonable officer definition is a very subjective statement. So what we the reason why nobody ever gets tried and convicted for this is because people say the way that the, that a jury would look and say innocent until proven guilty they look at the situation and they say is it possible that an officer in the spectrum of reasonable might think that he was drawing and pulling a gun on her and that she had to shoot and she reasonably feared for her life that's going to happen i'm just going to go ahead and fucking call it now that that's exactly what's going to happen so we'll see, maybe I'll be wrong, but because then they have to take that to a jury and they have to convince a jury of that too and say, because you have to convince a jury that this is, you know, at minimum manslaughter or whatever. You have to convince nine people, a jury of your peers, that this was murder. And I don't think we're gonna get there, so they won't even try. And that's why they don't even try. If you're at all confused about that. Um, if they determine felony charges appropriate, the case is presented to the grand jury. That's what I said. Anyway, she's been an officer since 95, so she's been an officer for 25 years. Uh, a suggestion that I have put out multiple times is that there should be mandatory retirement ages for officers or years on the force. Uh, other government jobs have this, like an air traffic controller. Air traffic controllers cannot be an employee past 56. It is just assumed that their job is so important and the risk to loss of life is so high that we make people retire before the potential for their faculties to lower, whatever the reason is. It's a mandatory retirement age. It's been there for a really long time. <clears throat> I think officers should have the same thing. I think maybe 15 years, 20 years is probably the most you should be able to serve. We can put you in some other, you can be, <clears throat> sorry, you can be uh, a, a officer in the streets dealing with people for 20 years. After that, you need to go be an administrative process. You can still be on the force, no problem. You just can't be out there with a gun potentially killing people. Seems reasonable to me. Um, there's a crisis intervention training that they had not completed. Um, the CI treat their crisis intervention training. That's for people who have mental, um, who are people in mental distress uh, or drugs or some sort of altered state. 47% of our patrol officers and patrol sergeants happen to the program. For context, if you look in Tyra Sworn, we're at 36% of all officers. Um, we're trying to put people through these classes, but they're always full. The class takes 40 hours and it turns it over on numbers. Right now we've trained 627 officers. So they're basically saying the reason that they didn't do it 
We just couldn't have the time. We couldn't figure it out. Well, if the classes are full, you can fix that. You can get more. That's a bullshit excuse. Absolutely bullshit excuse. Who knows how long they've been trying to do that. So that's kind of a general fact. As I like to do, I would also like to read an article that is perhaps a counter argument to the narrative that I have, that I feel. Um, I feel pretty strongly this was not the correct thing for the officer to do. Now we're going to read an article for what someone who maybe doesn't agree with my perspective. It looks to many Americans these days that white police officers are gunning down black people cavalierly, if not callously, without legal justification. There's a good reason some people see it that way. It has happened. The black man in North Charleston shot in the back repeatedly by a white cop was running from Lacan McDonald gunned down in the Chicago street. The shooting officer proven a liar by the video. We know this didn't only start happening when cell phones became a thing. But that's not what happens most of the time when someone's shot by a cop. Citation fucking needed there. Most of the time what happens is <clears throat> an officer responds to a 911 call. Let's say a woman reporting that there's a man inside a Burger King acting erratically and pointing a gun. Notice that the reporting did not say a woman. Again, that is an inference that somebody is trying to use in order to give us some sort of, um, you know, additional fear. You know, a woman might be more afraid. That's a pretty sexist trope. Uh, that's some bullshit, but that's also not factual. Uh, as, as the officer speeds to the scene, another call comes to the restaurant. A second woman says the man she thinks has a gun ran up to her car. The officer arrived. Again, I don't remember seeing a woman. So either the reporting that I have read is under-informed. I don't think so. I've read a couple more articles than the one I read here, but or this person is adding additional context to try to make it more dramatic. The officer arrives and sees a man crouched next to a car and yells, sir, put down the gun, drop the gun, drop the weapon. She repeatedly orders the man to drop the gun and another officer does the same. 17 or more times the man is told. Finally, he responds, I heard you the first time. No gun is dropped. Okay, I should stop. I'm, I'm kind of like pre -lo I'm like poisoning the well here with this article, which is not, um, which isn't giving it any type of uh, credibility. It's, I'm not being charitable. His right arm moves forward. The gun's suddenly seen and, and the officer fires. You told me to, the man says, not finishing a sentence before slumping to the ground. What's a cop supposed to do? That's what I thought as I watched the CPMD video released in court order by Monday of Dan Crees Franklin being shot and killed by Officer Wendy Curl. News accounts decided the case. One says the video shows police shooting and killing a man who was trying to put his gun down. A reporter tweets, if you slow or pause the video, it appears Franklin takes a gun, a small pistol by the tip of its barrel. That job is done for us. The video is cranked down in slow motion and zoomed in, so they're emphasizing that we obviously have the additional context and time. Just one problem, the officer wasn't able to slow or pause the video because it wasn't a video. The officer wasn't able to zoom in and contemplate the man's fingertip grip because she wasn't watching on a computer. For her, it was real life in real time. As she faced a man, she was told been acting erratically threatening people with a gun. A real gun, even if it was only a small pistol. In this case, it's still an investigation. The officer could still be charged. It's tragic that Frank is dead. Tragic that he went to the restaurant with a gun, threatened people, ignored repeated commands. This is inferring things that are not factually true. We do not know what happened. He's going off of early reporting, building a narrative, jumping to conclusions based on his own personal biases. Um, ignored repeated commands to drop the weapon, and when he responded, chose to wisecrack him, saying, "Okay, I'm dropping it." It's tragic, but those were—it's tragic, but those were his decisions, because we just make decisions without any additional, you know. Oops. When someone grabs a gun and puts innocent lives in danger, they stack a deadly deck against themselves. A cop is then expected to become superhuman to save the day, but they're just plain human police officers. Okay, that's the entirety of this article. Uh, we don't have a lot of—we don't have a lot. Of um, it's kind of nice that we don't have a lot. It's not surprising. So I'm just going to pull this back up here. So let's talk about why that article really doesn't make any fucking sense and why and what could have been done differently. Um, because we have a false dilemma. The false dilemma of shoot this man or potentially die is not the case. So first off, when we get here, these people show up and within just moments of being on the scene their guns are drawn they're screaming at him um, they've already pre-escalated the situation again we can complain about the reason why we can argue that the way that it's loaded to them is incorrect um, we can argue about their training but that's what happens 
Why do they why do they run up to him immediately? Why does she need to be this close? There is absolutely no reason. Time is on the officer's side, and it is the resource that is most often in these situation not utilized. It is treated as if this man needs to be taken down immediately. We must have immediate conflict with this situation. That is not the case. At no point was there, I mean, let's say we see him kneeling, we could get more information. They could drive up, they could use their car, they could get behind their car. We've seen it a million times in other types of standoff. We see it in the movies. Police drive up with their car, they utilize their car to shield themselves, to protect themselves, to feel less fear that they're gonna die, that they're gonna get fucking sniped, you know, that he's gonna turn and load them up with five bullets or whatever. They don't need to escalate the situation to the point where it is at this point. They also don't need to both be here. They could wait for backup. They could wait for more officers. You send two officers to a person with a gun? Um, anyway, that's the first piece. Okay, sir, put the gun Bystander shows up. Why are they not focused on pr keeping that person away? Why aren't, they, why aren't they stopping and saying, hold up, why is this person coming here? Why do they feel safe enough? Am I confused? I don't see a gun. I don't see a firearm. He, maybe he still has one, but I don't see one, which means it's probably not in his hand. Probably not ready to just take me out. Not pointing it at anybody, not threatening it with anybody. This is an open carry state. He could have a concealed carry. Somebody could have just gotten confused and scared. That's the Go other thing. Again, not utilizing time creates these types of conflicts and flashpoints. Put the gun down. He's got a gun. He's got a gun. She has enough time to sit there, radio, not really aim her weapon, right? Enough time to kind of be off her, off her mark for a little bit, to not be at like high regard, ready to fucking blow him away. But not enough time to back up, reassess the situation. Why isn't he complying with my orders? What's happening? Drop the gun! Drop the weapon! That could easily be his girlfriend. That probably is his girlfriend, in fact, because, again, that's what this guy says. So she's saying, hey, she's probably trying to de-escalate the situation for them. This is not factual. This is my opinion. But that is that looks like what's happening to me. Somebody who has not gone through this insane training. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Somebody who also has a concealed carry permit, legally, who could legally carry a weapon in the way that he has. So, that's... That, these are my main, th this is my main frustration and this is my, the main, my main takeaway is there is just no reason to create this flashpoint and this conflict point here. There's no reason not to use time. He's not wielding at his passenger. He kind of just looks like he's talking to a dude. Maybe he's leaning over because he's fucking scared that he thinks that somebody like saw him with the gun and got freaked out. They saw a black guy with the gun and they fucking called the police. It's just exactly what fucking happened. Um... I had one more point. I had one more point in my head. Put the gun on the ground. Put it. We are just, it is so frustrating to me that us as citizens who are not, are supposedly, you know, who don't receive any dedicated training are put in these situations where we are forced to be the de-escalators. We are forced to be the experts in interpersonal conflict. We are forced to be the ones to navigate these incredibly turbulent and complex situations that can very quickly prove lethal. Not the people that are paid 80, 90, $100,000 a year. She's a 25 year veteran. I'm sure she makes 100 grand plus realistically who have great benefits who are in unions that fight for them, that make sure that they get, who, who's gonna get crisis intervention training after this to make sure that they're okay. We're the ones, not them. And it's just, it's not right. That's not the right way to do things. It's not like she had fucking Call of Duty quick, quick time event fucking reactions either. I mean, she, he pulls the gun. The gun is away from him before he even fucking, before she shoots. 
crazy. So, <laughs> the reaction time isn't even that great. How's it going, Drew? So, I'm about, I'm about to wrap it up. I've been yelling about this for 40 minutes. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. We will probably see no accountability. She will probably be back on the force after her, you know, 120 day or whatever investigation. I can pretty much guarantee you there will be no charges filed. Um, what will be interesting to see, here is what I am looking for with this. I am looking to see, uh, oh, I guess I didn't even uh, do this correctly. Um, I am looking to see, uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. I am looking to see if the chief makes a choice, makes a difference, makes a change, enforces better training, um, calls out how spooled up his officers were, how they didn't utilize time in order to prevent this type of this issue. If he reinforces, you know, medical training, if he reprimands them for not giving him first aid after the shooting. Um, these are the things that I am looking for. This is the best I am looking for to come out of this. Which is, un which is unfortunately not much, but it's a step in, in the right direction, hopefully. Um, I hope he keeps being very, uh, I hope he keeps being very honest about this. I hope he acknowledges at the end of this, I hope he holds a press conference and I hope he talks about it, but I'm not gonna keep my hopes up. Um, I was gonna go through some of the, uh, some of the let's just let's just do it let's go into the toxicity just briefly this is how i'm going to end it i'm going to end it on the fucking toxicity and i want to talk about people's perspective on this what they saw so let's look through some of the comments i saw on this took too much time moved his other hand plus the cop is female doesn't have calm nerves to stay calm doesn't have anything to do with her being a, a woman doesn't have anything to do with her with that sexist bullshit it has to do with their training that's why Jumpy female officer shot. This is why I believe strong-hearted men should be the ones on duty. I'm no woman hater, but I see this time and time again. Women on duty making bad calls, getting shot, and constantly getting overpowered by male suspects. Her partner knew damn well not to shoot, but she got jumpy when she saw the gun hand go down 100% at fault. You know, the only thing I will say, it is possible that there is some, that I wouldn't be surprised if their training emphasizes her femininity in some way and saying and that the gun is the tool is the force equalizer for her that she might need to to rely on more often there might be something to that it's not that women are inherently a problem it is that their training may inherently teach women these types of behaviors that is my theory i don't understand why he didn't communicate and say he's dropping and demonstrate how also the other cop's angle may have been compromised by his backstop Plus, she was probably the one appointed to fire if necessary. <laughs> appointed to fire if necessary? This is not a thing. This is... I, I don't know what these people... I don't know where some people get their opinions on this stuff. Do, does CSI and shit have, you know, firing orders and shit? I don't think that's the case in these types of life and death situations that they create. It's better than having both of them shoot him and causing twice the damage when they're trying to incapacitate the suspect if possible. I'm pretty sure they do not teach to take a bass day. I'm pretty sure they teach you to kill if you're a police officer. I don't, they don't teach you to maim. They don't teach you to shoot at legs. I think they teach you to fucking kill. I don't think this is a concern. Not too sure on this concept, but I remember a few times where they pre-planned to let one officer put shots on target for a moment, and if it's ineffective, the next officer follows up the shots until the threat is neutralized. Maybe this is some crazy fucking... I, I, don't, I don't think that's real. I've never heard of that, but I could be wrong. That's not what putting the gun down looks like. Instead of complying immediately, he decides to alternate from stoically ignoring cops to insanely screwing with the weapon in front of his person, appearing to shift it from his left to right hand. I'm just not sure what people expect. I think I think that these people do not critically think about what it takes to comply. A, a lot of this is just very privileged. People who are have never been in this case, I'm guessing many of these people don't have concealed carry permits, probably aren't familiar with firearms, don't have any type of you know, again, even pulling it out of your, I would be concerned about like crossing it against myself. To me, the way he did it, where he effectively had it with like three fingers holding it like a, 
like this precious thing? That seemed pretty reasonable to me. He didn't, she didn't have a great angle, which is why she shouldn't have been escalated, shouldn't have been that close. Why was he carrying a gun then if he's such a good boy? Repeal the Second Amendment then. If we're gonna have the Second Amendment, then this attitude is absolutely, maybe this person is an American, maybe that's why they feel that way. But in America, as long as the Second Amendment exists, uh, you can carry a gun. That doesn't make you a bad person. Cops carry guns. There are many security personnel. Many people choose to carry guns. This is a feature of our society. If you don't like it, then fucking go talk to your fucking politician. But you cannot, we cannot be assuming that because someone has a gun, they are dangerous or they're a problem. That's just, that's just not the case. This, if this is a duplicitous, this is, this is a false dichotomy. We can't have that. Okay, we've read through the cancer. Um, all right, so that's going to conclude the end of this video. We've solved another one. We've improved cops, hopefully. Um, so I got this from a recommendation. I'm happy to have another recommendation. If you uh, feel free to comment, feel free to tweet at me or post on the video or whatever. Um, I would love to see more. I mean, the unfortunate reality is, as usual, there is no lack of... of uh, of available videos for us to go through moment by moment. Uh, all right. Uh, until next time, FTP. Fix the police.